<laughs> Recording now in high definition. You're listening to Denver Wine Radio, the podcast about Colorado wine. My name is Paul Bonaquisti. I'm the winemaker at Bonaquisti Wine Company, an urban winery I launched back in 2006 in Denver, Colorado, where I've been making and learning about wine ever since. I'm sitting down with other wineries and wine experts to find out what makes Colorado wine so unique and to help you find the wines you like to drink. And now, let's put some altitude in your glass. Are you jamming over there? Yeah. Carlos. <laughs> you haven't even had any wine yet. <laughs> I know. Welcome, everybody, to Denver Wine Radio. Yeah, Carlos Santana playing way in the background, but uh, probably be hard to hear. Possible. No. Too far back. Yeah, too far back. So, hey, uh, welcome. We're uh, Denver Wine Radio. I'm Paul Bonaquisti, cha-cha in the house today. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Thanks for coming down to taste wine today. Ah, it's good to be here, Paul. The holidays are upon us. They are. They're here. And here. wow, lots of choices out there for uh, holiday wine. Absolutely. Not only gifts, but for your dinners, for your parties. Yeah. And we got you covered right here. <laughs> we, we do. We're going <laughs> to do a, uh, it's actually going to be a two wine broadcast today. Okay. Uh, very exciting, but we're featuring one grape, Tempranillo. Okay. Okay. So how are you familiar are you with Tempranillo? Um, r- refresh my memory. <laughs> <laughs> not very. Okay. Not very familiar. <laughs> Tempranillo is uh, the grape from Spain. Okay. That's the red grape. Right. Very famous in Spain from, from the Rioja region. Okay. And um, it's very tasty. Okay. Some of the flavors you may find in Tempranillo, cherry. Okay. Dried fig. Fig. Mm-hmm. Really? Cedar. Okay. I okay. can, I can, but fig? Tobacco. Okay. Anyway, that you get the idea. Is it the high regions, the the of Spain, the? Uh... Yeah, it grows all over, but okay. um, and you know, and it grows very well here in Colorado. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, and there's regions of Spain that have that high desert kind of thing, like we yeah. do. Uh, La Mancha is a oh, okay. is an area. Deserty. Well, yeah, it's deserty, and it's been uh, compared to, or at least, uh, to Colorado. Really, to like yeah. the Western Slope, like Grand Junction. Yeah. Like we've compared area? to La Mancha. Oh, okay. Gotcha. They didn't. They didn't say, "Hey, La Mancha, <laughs> you were a lot like Colorado." <laughs> so it's kind of the same kind of yeah, desert-y, arid, high that desert, desert, arid, okay. arid climate, and Tempranillo thrives there, and yeah. uh, as it does in all of Spain, but uh, but it does really well here, and, the, and there's quite a few wineries that are making Tempranillo. So we're going to feature uh, two today. Okay. One. From the sponsor of Denver Wine Radio, Bonaquisti Wine Company. <laughs> Thank you. Too kind. I know. So yeah, we have a Polly. we have a 2020 Colorado uh, Tempranillo, and then um, our feature wine today is a 2015 Tempranillo from Kingman Estates Winery. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so, so yeah, this is, uh, I'm excited to try this 2015, very nice, heavy bottle. This is a beautiful package. And, uh, let me, can I bring up the, uh, the wine, the wine bottle cam? Yeah. Cause this is a pretty, uh, hefty bottle here of, uh, of wine. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. I mean, I'm trying to figure out the, uh, well, okay, there we've got it. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> You can't see the the screen, Shaw. Only no. I can see it. Yeah, right. I'm just looking at the bottles. Yeah. So there's a we got a three a three way going. <laughs> what? <laughs> we do? Me, you, and two <laughs> bottles of wine. Okay, there you go. There's your wine. Okay. You got them? There you go. I got them. What a great okay. shot that is. Okay. So um so we should start out. Oh, and by the way, we are going to hear um a recorded uh, video from Doug Kingman, the owner of Kingman Estates Winery, to talk about his Tempranillo. And where exactly is this winery located? They're located here in Denver, up at 64th and Washington. Okay. So he's kind of, um, um, he's got a big facility. So he'd be an urban winery. He Mm -hmm. makes wine here um, in industrial Denver. Great facility. He's got a tasting room. It's fantastic. Makes a lot of great wines. And he brings, you know, he buys grapes from the Western Slope, mm-hmm. uh, from these uh, all these different Colorado growers. And right and, on, yeah. So, 
So first, we should warm up your palate. Okay. Okay, let's try the Bonacquisti Wine Company Tempranillo. Okay, let's okay. do it to it. All right, we'll grab it. All right. You, you do the pouring today. Oh, I'll do the pouring. Okay. <laughs> let's see here. Yeah, let's see. See how you're doing with that. Wow. I love the color. Yeah, you pour yourself a nice pour. Yeah, I did, huh? Because I'm starting to drink. Polly's, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting me to drink. Okay, let's see. Let's put this back in front of the cameras. Okay. And I'll, uh, here you go. I'll give you the Oh, you gave it. me the big yeah. one. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Oh, it's got a beautiful color, Polly. This grape is really a pretty grape, if you will. <laughs> it is. It's, it does have beautiful color. Um. Mm. Oh. What did you smell? <laughs> oh, this is good. Come on. <laughs> it's it, I it's very cedary to me. It, it, I can I can taste a woody a, a very like a rustic. Mm -hmm. But all oh, the fruit. Rustic is a good smell. I mean, it's a good description. It is it does smell rustic. Very There's a lot rustic. going on. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm getting some cherry. Okay, and, and now, yeah, I definitely get the fruit. And I get the lime, a little bit of, not lime, lemon, like a little bit of citrus. Maybe not uh, lemon, but a little bit of citrus, just a tad. Mm, okay. But the most I get is that rustic, woody flavor. This is really good. All right, I'm going to try it now. Yum. Oh, and it feels so warm going down. Right? Wow, I haven't I haven't had this for a long time. It's good. <laughs> so, this is a really small production wine we did and released it in mm. uh, 2021. Of course, I stashed a, a few bottles um, for an occasion just like this. But yeah, really bright fruit. Mm. It's got uh, it's got good acid to it and just. Very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah, very the tannins. Warm. The tannins are uh, yes, and it is warm. Yes, very uh, by the fire on a snowy night. What would you pair this up with if you were uh, having it for dinner? Wow, and it, does, it has a little bit of spiciness on the finish. A little bit. Yeah. So already, I'm thinking uh, charcuterie, some spicy, uh, some kind of sopressata. It's got a little kick to it. Uh, pepperoni, you know, that yeah, type of thing. Exactly. It's going to be really good. Um, Maybe a dried cheese. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd go right for Manchego. Yep. Go right for the, the Manchego, the Spanish cheese. It's going to be really good. Put some Membrillo on that. Oh, it's good. Which is. Um, quince. Yes. That's the quince. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quince, uh, quince jam. Yeah. They call it quince paste, but it's a, it's a jam. We grew up with it in, in uh, New Mexico. Did you really? We had, yeah. The, we had the Membrillo trees and every year, wow. man, they would, it, it's a hard job to peel those things and they would can them. You, you jar them in the, you know, canning. Yeah. And it's a sweet fruit, almost like canned peaches. Wow. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had it? Not the videos like, like that? Not like that, oh, no. Oh, Paul, I'm going to have to score oh, you a, can, a jar somewhere when I go home. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but no, like your wine, they guard it. like Because it's a hard process to do it. But yeah, it's the fruit, and they peel it like an apple, and real hard to chop, and then they can them with spices. What is a quince, Alex? Remember that? No. Uh, Rosie Perez in White Men Can't Jump. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> That's the one she won. <laughs> she won the. She went on Jeopardy on the in the movie. Oh yeah, okay. And I that's what that. she won. That what a, is a, that was what a is a quince? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some embryos. God, yep. it's amazing, you know, about embryos. Yeah. So, well, that's what Man, I would pair, and then of good. course, um, your red meats yeah. are going to be delicious. Yeah. yeah, I could even. Use this in a uh, in a recipe, like a really good hearty beef stew or something like that to add a flavor because it's got that that I keep saying it that rustic woody kind of. It's really good. Forest floor is that what you call that rustic? Yeah, that's good. Tasty. Okay. Good, right, Polly. So, okay, don't get all freaked out on. Um... <laughs> On on drinking this first glass of Tempranillo because we've got more. We got to try. We're going to try Kingman's Tempranillo. Okay, okay? Uh, but first up, we are going to uh, we're going to hear from Doug Kingman right now, and 
and uh, let me bring him up. We're Kingman Winery. We've been making wine for 10 years. We never had anything to do with wine before that, but I wanted something to do. So <laughs> my wife said, you've never made wine before. So I bought a little kit, made some, and it tasted okay. Okay, we solved that problem. We can make, so we jumped in and we won a lot of awards and it's pretty fun. To, it's, you gotta love it though. It's not a thing you're gonna get rich at, but it's a thing you have an awful lot of fun at. And I can talk for hours about the wine making, but I'm only supposed to talk for five minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna talk about Tempranillo. So when you think of Tempranillo, you can think of Spain. If you've been to Madrid or Barcelona or been in the foothills of Spain in the mountains, hot and dry, spicy, lots of neat smells in the air, nothing you'll really pick up here except maybe in the southwest Colorado area in New Mexico, those kind of spiciness in the air. That's what's in Tempranillo. And it carries with it all that romance of Spain, the, the visions of the wars they've had there forever, and the people, flamenco dancing, the food, tapas, all those things that are just very Spanish. And that's what I think of as Tempranillo. And that's why we made it, because of, I like the idea of it. As a winemaker, it's fun to make wine. I probably have made 20 or 30 different kinds of wine. It's hard to know when to stop. And, you, and then you have to sell them. And that's usually the harder part. It's easy to make the stuff. Tempranillo, the first time we made it, and this is a 2015 version, was the first one we made. I got two tons of it. I never made it before. And fermented it and pressed it. And it was snowing when we pressed it. And the wine tasted awful. We put it in some French oak barrels. And the first year, thought, oh, we did a bad thing somehow here. This isn't going to work. But then the next year, it was amazing. So wine needs time, and it likes that French oak. Now, if I use French oak, I get more spiciness, and I don't get as much tannin from it as Paul was talking about the oak tannins. If I use American oak, I can get a lot of tannin, a lot of oak flavor. It can overwhelm it, so I like French oak for this so that it doesn't overwhelm it, and you get a lot of the spiciness that comes with the Tempranillo. This wine, it tends to like tapas. It tends to like something like a red snapper with a pepper crusted red snapper. He thinks that's pretty tasty. It's more of a, so there's two kinds of wine in my way of thinking. There's glass wines that pair well with a glass and there's wines that pair well with food. This one I think of one is, it likes a glass and it's pretty fun to sip, but it really likes good food. And it's really happy when you pair it with some good food. So I think of it as a wine friendly, uh, a food friendly wine. I suspect when you taste it, you'll, you, you might get some spiciness. Try three small tastes of it, and then in the third taste is when you really get to enjoy the full flavor and the nuances of the wine. So give it a try. A little something while well, you're doing that about tannins. Not a lot of tannin in this. If you like to play with your food, you can swirl your wine underneath your upper lip. And it's, there's a lot of tannin in there. You can't hardly peel your upper lip off your upper gum. It's a fun way to test how much wine you got, how much tannin you have in your wine. Any questions about it? Yes, sir. This being a spicy wine, are there any mammals that kind of go at your vines or anything like that? Or do you have... They don't know that it's a spicy wine, but raccoons... <laughs> <laughs> No, if you have a small vineyard, predation like that will wipe out about half of it. So you need a pretty good sized vineyard and no bears. We've had some cases up in Palisade where the bears came and wiped out almost all of our do you, grapes. Do you use grape or anything like that to keep all the mammals away? No. Sometimes tall fences, but most part, just try to have a lot of them so the animals don't get to them. Unlike South Africa where they have baboons that'll come get them. They, they come over everything. Got to watch out for the baboons, Charles. And the raccoons. <laughs> and the raccoons. <laughs> and the bears. <laughs> you know, he was talking about 
um, the spiciness of uh, that was very similar to the desert southwest. And when he said that, what came to my mind is like uh, the desert when it smells after it rains. Oh, yeah. And you get all those, you get from the mesquite to the flowers to the air, and it just smells so beautiful. And it's almost like that's what this wine, you know, that smells like. It just smells like nature in a way. It sure does. We, uh, and by the way, that was uh, Doug Kingman at the uh, Colorado Wine Week. Uh, where I did a recording of a few winemakers. So it was great to hear him talk about that wine. And we're going to try it right now. He's funny. So uh, hook us up. Part? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Whoa, this is a heavy bottle, Paul. <laughs> Let's see if I can bring up the cam. Let's see. Wow. Here we go. Bring up the wine cam. Yeah. You're... Oh, yeah. Good one. Okay, let's see. Wow. This, see, this has more of a, a little bit different color already. It's not as red. Um, seems like it, it has a little more of a, a caramel color to it, a little more of a brown hue. It's crazy, huh? Because yours was really, it's uh, it, it's pretty dark red. This seems like it's just got a whole different little. Oh, Yeah, man. well, this one. It's older. It's more mature in in the bottle. Oh, okay. So uh, as wines age and mature, the the color starts to change in the bottle. So that's why you're seeing a different color. Mm. The smell is just lovely. Wow. Yeah, it does. It's big and rich. You literally could put a wick in this and make a candle. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. and walk into the aroma of this every <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah, lots of tobacco. I'm getting some of the cedar on this one. Wow. Some dried fruit. Wow. Oh, all kinds of fruit. Wow. Explosion, right? Wow, very rich. Yeah, this is um, oh. this is really delicious. Um, mouth coating, mouth coating, mouth watering. Really nice Tempranillo. Um, he aged this for three years in French Oak. So that's why this is their reserve. So this is 2015 vintage, you know, they didn't release it probably till 2019, I want to say, but, um, it is, it's really good. This is the real deal. Very good. Very, um, very smooth going down. Yeah. Very smooth. It's, uh, you know, it's bold, uh, it's structured, but really rich and um this is this is something i mean this is going to pair with oh. i mean if so if you're you're doing uh for christmas prime rib for example delicious on sale now at uh, your favorite grocery stores King but Zippers. yeah <laughs> um this is going to be really good especially if you do that rosemary i mean th things like that those rustic mm -hmm. uh rosemary potatoes herbs. and the herbs and uh thyme uh or this could pair very Easily with me, myself, and I. <laughs> you don't need no prime rib. <laughs> you don't. Yeah, cheese, uh, some kind of uh, really heavy cheese is going to be nice with this. Mm. So back to that Manchego or um, Parmesan Reggiano, something really rich mm. is going to go very nicely with this. This is super, super delish. Well done. Mm, very good. Doug Kingman at Kingman Estates Winery. We love this one. Very, very good. Barney Christie's was good too. Yours was very good, Polly. Thank you. It's just a different, yeah. Because I could taste all the fruit in yours. I could taste, you know, the oak as well. Uh, this, as you said, the color is different because it's been aging a little bit longer, and uh, it just seems like it's a little, uh, like a lighter, like a little lighter in a sense. Does that make any sense? That this one is, yeah, um, just a tad. Yeah, this I, yeah, there. <laughs> So the the Bonacquisti Tempranillo, younger, 2020, more fruit. Yes. Made in a different style, okay? Mm -hmm. So that wine I made to release in a year. Okay. So, so, you know, some oak aging and some stainless steel aging to create that style of wine. Okay. So. So if I kept your wine unopened for like five years, aged it for five years, would it have a different taste? When I opened it up after it aged a little bit more. Oh, if you, okay. So seller that, seller that bottle of mine for mm -hmm. five years, mm -hmm. 
Is, yeah, it's going to, it's not going to turn out like the Kingman. Okay. No. But uh, it will taste, it'll age a little bit more. It'll, it'll age a little, okay. yeah, it'll age more. Uh, tannins will soften up. Okay. And, th- but then at some point you'll start to lose that fruit. Yeah. So oh, okay. you'll lose the Got, vibrancy yeah. of okay, the fruit. Okay, I, I understand. Okay. okay. Wow. Well, they're both delicious. Two winners for uh, Colorado right here. And perfect for the holiday. Yeah, definitely. Kingman, uh, let's see. I believe his runs comes in at $42. Okay. Uh, I can't find it, but I'm going to guess $42. Mm-hmm. Uh, very nice packaging, mm-hmm. uh, heavy bottle. Very it's, nice. Yeah, wine. real nice. And uh, mine runs comes in at 30 bucks. Okay. If you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> if you can find it. You can find it. You'll have to come direct to the winery and ask the winemaker himself for a bottle of that 2020 Colorado Tempranillo. Yeah. And that winemaker, I hear he's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. I hear he's pretty cool. <laughs> he's got a good record collection. <laughs> he's got a great record collection. Great voice, too. <laughs> that guy. He makes great award-winning wine. Well, this has been fun today. It Tempranillo is fun. great. So, yeah, I would... You know, mm. search out some Tempranillos from Colorado. Um, and then also, go grab some Tempranillo uh, at the liquor store. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and always very good value from coming from Spain. And they have different levels of um, aging. Mm-hmm. So the wines from Spain are, um, that's that's usually what you would see, Reserve, uh, Grand Reserve. So that, and that has to do with how long they age the wine. So, oh, okay. So if you like older, smoother, richer, then you go for the Grand Reserva. Oh, the Grand Reserva. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, you know what? This is, I think any, any kind is good for the holiday season. Like I said, whether you're sitting by the fire roasting chestnuts, making bizcochitos, you know what? having a great dinner, this and is perfect. You, you did Bring these cochitos. I did. Let's try one. I bet we could pair one up with one one of these wines. Yeah. All right. We're gonna we're gonna do this on the fly. And let's explain what the bizcochito is. Yeah, tell us what it is. You don't know what it is. It's a traditional Mexican cookie, Latino cookie, whatever, uh, that's made during the uh, holidays, especially at Christmas and special occasions like uh, weddings, quinceañeras, and it's basically a cookie that is made with. Lard. Okay. (laughs) And I know you're saying lard, but I've tried to go the the other route. I've tried to go Crisco oil. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Got to have the Manteca. But it's it's a cinnamon sugar cookie. So uh, you can probably... Okay, so... What do you say? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. This is what you do for food and wine pairing, okay? Okay. You take a bite of the food. This mm-hmm. is what you want to see if this is going to work. Okay. You take a bite of the food uh-huh. and then smell, just smell the wine with the food in your mouth as you, after you, after you start chewing a little bit mm-hmm. and, and see what you get, you know, see if you get contrasting smells or if you get some synergy going right oh away. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You got to know my goodness. It's like didn't magic. You? Uh-huh. So. Oh my god! I could the spice came through the wine. The spice comes through, and you could you could argue that. So next, now when you if you smelled this wine, you could say, "Wow, cinnamon." Sometimes it's hard to pull out, but when you have the cinnamon in in your palate, that's amazing. It's serious, it's like magic. <laughs> it was like magic. Yeah. Can you taste it? Yeah, I can taste it. It's the, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I could. I'm not against that. It's a <laughs> the cookie's a little sweet, <laughs> yeah. too sweet for the wine. But, but it does make the wine pop. It does, yeah. So you do, that's you, amazing. You do that with the food. So same thing with the cheese. Let's say we had some manchego here. Mm-hmm. We take a bite of the cheese, smell the wine, and that earthiness is going to come out, right? So, and you're going to know. Yeah. But if you get something really off that doesn't, then chances are the the wine's not going to pair with that food that right. you're eating. So, like a whopper. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to work. It might work with a no, Whopper. No, 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 no. But I can see with a good prime rib that this wine would be just totally awesome as well. Very good. Very, this, this was, uh, this is good wine tasting right here, Polly. That is. So. See? All right. Holiday wine. Uh, choosing one. It's Tempranillo.
Mm-hmm. Until next week, we'll uh, we'll we'll find another. Ah,、uh, but for sure, this this is a good, definitely a good Christmas wine. Hey, maybe you could share your biscochitos recipe, and、uh, I'll put it up in the show notes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So lard, sugar. Lard, it's easy. Lard, <laughs> sugar, flour, and wine. I use Vinny No Neck. You put some wine in the batter. I yeah. My mom. The- my mom always used、uh, Mogan David. Wine, yeah, the cheapest, right? It was a sweet wine. It was a sweet wine, yeah. She said that was the secret to her biscochos. So I went around looking for Mug and David. Two liquor stores. They looked at me like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> Come on, Granny." <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> no. So I used uh, Vinny uh, No Neck. Wow.、Mm-hmm. And it's not as sweet, but that's what I use for the cookies. No wonder I'm loving it.、Mm-hmm. Oh, this is wonderful. I know this is very good. Well, come down any time, Cha. I love I this. I will. I will. Totally will. See, you got me drinking now. It's your fault. Well, no, seriously. For people that are just listening for the first time, I I don't drink. I've never really, sixty <laughs> seven years old, and I've had maybe maybe a half a glass of wine in my lifetime, maybe <laughs> or a full glass. Yeah. In all the little sips and stuff, <laughs> but I am really now that I'm learning about it and in in learning what I'm tasting and where it comes from, it makes such a difference. It does. It's just like food or anything else. It's the region in which it comes, how they cook it, everything else. It's amazing. I'm enjoying this. I'm glad you are. So thank you for making me a wina. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, wina. <laughs> <laughs> Oh,、uh, right. that's funny. I could I could veer off here and make some funny <laughs> jokes, but we won't. We won't. But all I can say is thanks for listening today. Go out and try some Colorado wine. It's delicious. Look for Tempranillo this time and and report back to us at DenverWineRadio dot com. You can leave us a voice message. There's a little button down on the corner.、Um, you know, tell a friend to listen and subscribe.、Yeah. That's the big one right there. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> yeah. Because the more you subscribe, the more we drink. Actually, I think they changed it. I think it's follow now. <laughs> oh, is it follow now? Yeah. <clears throat> so follow us wherever you listen to、uh, your favorite podcasts. So, all right, that's it from Denver Wine Radio. Thanks for having me, Polly. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy holidays. Bye. That's our show for this week. Thank you so much for listening to Denver Wine Radio. Your homework for the week is to go out and taste some Colorado wine. If you have any questions or comments, or just want to let us know what you're drinking, go to DenverWineRadio.com, where you can email us or leave us a voice message. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, put some altitude in your glass. Produced and distributed by the Sound Off Media Company.